You're watching ABC4 News with Emily Flores, Glenn Mills, and Alana Brophy. Well, states across the country have laws limiting what sex offenders can do around children on Halloween, but Utah does not have any of those laws. abc Force Jillian Smuckler looks into what's being done to protect our children and why parents have mixed reactions in trick or retreat. Halloween is all about getting dressed up in your favorite costume and going trick or treating. But it's also when children are more vulnerable to potential threats by sex offenders. They're coming to your home uh, of their own free will. They didn't need to be groomed. They didn't need to be coaxed. Just here they are showing up at your house. That's why several states have laws and restrictions that limit what registered sex offenders can and can't do during the holiday. In neighboring Nevada, any sex offender under state supervision isn't allowed to put up decorations, answer the door, or pass out candy to trick-or-treaters on Halloween. In Utah, there's no Halloween sex offender laws. The Utah Department of Corrections tells all offenders under supervision not to interact with trick-or-treaters. However, that doesn't apply to the thousands of offenders on the registry who are no longer under supervision. I think they should do a lot more than they do in Utah. I really do. Even still, parents are encouraged to check where potential predators live before mapping out their trick-or-treat route. Boy, I'm supposed to do due dil diligence before I send my kid trick-or-treating? I mean, that's ridiculous. I think the parents should be the ones doing it. Parents aren't the only ones with mixed feelings on what should be expected of them. Many law enforcement agencies have different ways of handling sex offenders on Halloween. We will have people out and we are going to drive through areas, especially where we know there might be a high concentration of sex offenders or sex offenders in neighborhoods. Hello. Meanwhile, the Unified Police Department is going door to door this week, reminding every registered sex offender in its jurisdiction of their conditions and asking them not to pass out candy. You don't want to go back to jail, so let's make sure that nothing happens and that we're not creating an opportunity for you. But other police agencies like West Valley and Provo say because there are no sex offender laws, they don't do anything outside their usual monitoring. It would not be a, a violation of the law for um, a person on the sex offender registry to open their door and to respond if someone approached them. Yeah. So I don't know how to warn people not to engage in lawful behavior. Last Halloween, a man living on this street exposed himself to several kids who were out trick or treating. Now, nearly a year later, neighbors here are still concerned knowing it could happen again. And that's because he's one of 60 registered sex offenders living within a two mile radius. It ticked me off. It really did. You know, how could he do that? You know, these are little kids. You don't do it. And the candy was inside. You don't ask them into your house. I spoke with two moms who live close to where this happened in Provo last year who asked to remain anonymous out of fear for their safety. Terrified. I, you know, the, already it's, it's kind of um, a bit of a risk to go trick-or-treating these days with the way the world is, but knowing that there's someone right in your vicinity, like, I don't feel comfortable doing that at all. It's scary. Um... But I mean, that's why we stay in. But I think it's kind of sad also because like you're scared for your kids and you can't you can't really participate in things like that because you know, I mean, you don't know what could happen. They tell me more needs to be done to make sure their kids are safe, especially since this has happened in their neighborhood before. How do we know right. he won't do it again? Well, the fact is we don't know that he won't do it again. So how big of a problem are registered sex offenders on Halloween? It could definitely be happening more than we know. It's just it's very, something that's very likely to be underreported. Things happen on Halloween that people just laugh off or brush off as a Halloween prank where it maybe wasn't um, a Halloween prank. That's why parents are encouraged to talk to their kids about avoiding certain homes and making sure they have a way to communicate while trick-or-treating. Just making sure that you're aware and you're not dismissing something just for an experience or a piece of candy or whatever. Like if you don't feel right about it, then skip that house. Sometimes your intuition is best. Some police officers say having a law that spells out exactly what registered sex offenders can do on Halloween will help eliminate any confusion about what's allowed across our state. Until then, some parents say it's up to them to figure out how to best protect their child. We have to deal with it. We have to figure out how to keep our children safe. Reporting in Salt Lake City, Jillian Smuckler, ABC4 News.